for program to write okay okay so uh, let's suppose that i am building a system and my requirement is that a lot of customers will read my data and i have very few writes or updates okay mm -hmm. so let's suppose that uh, i'm i'm having a news portal where the uh, let's suppose millions of customer will come and uh, they will read uh, the news okay but very few uh, people like editors will go and modify the content of that and let's suppose that i have two data structure to be used here like array list and linked list okay mm -hmm. so in this case where i have a lot of reads uh, but very few writes or updates which data structure will be more suitable the array list or the linked list uh for more read operation uh, you can go for uh, uh, array list array list yeah okay, why is that yeah actually uh, array list uh, actually every day the it will be data will be uh, uh, grow right uh, for read operation we have more data to read so it will automatically grow in the structure there is no pre predefined uh, structure is there the size of the array Automatic. okay so <clears throat> what will happen in the data grow how the array list will help in that yeah once it's reached the maximum size it automatically allocate uh, another uh, another size uh, uh, by default it will be 10 it will be allocate so it will be um, okay but in this case how the array list will help as compared to linked list that's what i'm asking Let's suppose that I have a, a lot of read and very few writes. So why should I go for the array list and not the linked list? How it, that will help me? See, uh, for linked list, uh, it will be stored the address of the next element, right? So when I want to write the element in the middle, that case, uh, the right uh, suitable for uh, linked list uh, write operation suitable, but uh, read operation is uh, array list uh, better. Because, Why? Uh, because uh, we can uh, do the read operation uh, randomly. Also, it will support a random read operation. Also, it support a real list. Okay, so you say that uh, you can directly go to that index and you can read it. Yeah. So that will cause uh, support the co reading in constant time. That's what you should take. Okay. Yeah. So let's uh, move to another question. Can you tell me like how a hash map works? So I have a hash map. Okay, and I have three records. Karthik as key one is value again kartik as key two is value and then key and three as value and kartik and gunar sekhar both has the same hash code now can you tell me like how these three records will get inserted in the hash map yeah these three records like uh, it will um, it generally have a linked list uh, data structures so first it will take the key and then this key uh, where exact it will allocate uh, one more uh, each bucket uh, on independent linked list so those linked list uh, it will check and then uh, so how do you know that which bucket to go to yeah it will check the equals and uh, hash code uh, method we have to override and check this object is equals or not then uh, it will store no, no but i'm saying how it will find the bucket through the hash code, uh, it will find the bucket. Uh, which bucket. okay, okay. And let's suppose that I have stored Karthik one. Okay, when I find the hash bucket, I get there. I restore Karthik one. Now, what will happen when I put I, I call map dot put Karthik two? Now, what will happen? First, it will uh, check uh, hash code is equal or not. Then it will check the uh, object is equal. Then it will uh, store. What will happen? What will happen in this case when I'm trying to put Karthik two? So Karthik two, uh, first it will check uh, this Karthik two which bucket is there. So based on the uh, once it's find the um, bucket, it will check the hash code or equals hash code value is same. The hash code value also same. Then it will take. What it will take? Can you explain it? Like. I have this record Karthik, okay, as key and one as value. So it got stored in some bucket, okay. Let's suppose the bucket number is three, okay. It got stored there. 
Now I am putting Kartik as key and two as value. Now what will happen? Can you give me a what step to step by step process? Uh, yeah, it's first the Kartik one. Uh, it will it will Kartik one. It will check the hash code of the Kartik one. Can you uh, tell me step by step when I'm putting Kartik two? Okay, Kartik one is stored already, right? Okay. And bucket number three. Now I'm putting Kartik two. Can you give me like step by step? Do not tell me the the overall view. I'm saying step by step. Can you tell me like what will happen now? This will happen. Then it will go there. Then it will store there. Then it will check there. So this. They, can you tell me like when I'm putting Kartik two, what will happen? Okay. Uh, Kartik two. First, once you put Kartik two, this Kartik two already uh, present any of the uh, bucket or not, it will check. It okay, will leave be... that. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Move to some other question. Do you know about polymorphism? Yeah, yeah. Polymorphism. Yeah. Can you tell me what is polymorphism? Uh, it's kind of uh, it's uh, same uh, it's kind of same object uh, sorry same we can do the multiple uh, time for example i have a plus operator the plus operator will be do the add operation as well as concatenating two strings you kind know of multiple things uh, it should support so something is supporting multiple things then that would be polymorphism do you know about Compile time polymorphism or runtime polymorphism? Actually, compile uh, overloading uh, called compile time polymorphism. Overriding is uh, runtime polymorphism. What is overloading and overriding? Uh, overloading the method name it will be same, but the arguments uh, arguments also same. That concept called overloading. Overriding uh, method name and uh, signature will be uh, different. Are you sure about it? Mm, yeah. So, what happens? Let's suppose that I have a parent class. Okay, base. Okay, I'll leave it. Can you write a program? I will give you one. Okay. Then, so I have a string array, str. Okay. And I have n number of string in there. It could be any number of string. Okay. Like I have one string as flower, one string as four, and one string as a. And you have to find the common prefix in this array list, this array of string. So the array, okay, array list of three elements. So the three elements. So it could, it could be a number of strings. It's not necessary. I just given the example like here it has the three strings, but it could be a number of strings. And you have to find the common prefix. So what is the common prefix in all these three strings? Your fill. Yeah. So you have to write a program where you will be given an array of strings and you will have to find the common prefix. Can you write it? You share your screen and uh, okay. uh, write it on the notepad. Okay. Double see my screen. Yeah, yeah, now I want to see it. Yeah, okay. <laughs>
you have written the string to care array. Here, string is not a string, but a string array. So this to care array will apply to that. And even if it is applied, you are storing it into a string array, not in the character array. As the name itself suggests, to care array, to care array will convert that string into an array of character, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so yeah, uh, that's all right. I understand your logic, uh, what you are trying to do. So yeah, Karthik, uh, that's all for now. So I will form the HR and they will get back to you. Okay? Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah okay. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Karthik. Bye-bye.